Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. Douglas McGregor expresses uncertainty regarding the concept of a full-scale ground invasion and suggests it's challenging to gauge. He speculates that the proposed deployment involves around 10,000 well-trained troops likely heading towards northern Gaza. McGregor anticipates a significant backlash from the Muslim world spanning from Indonesia to Morocco and foresees the formation nation of a formidable military coalition against Israel in the region. He highlights Turkey as a key player in this emerging alliance, surpassing his previous concerns about Iran. Oh, actually, he was very pleased with the restraint shown when the offer for mediation first came forward. He had hoped that Washington, if not Israel, would take it seriously and accept the offer. However, he sees the recent actions as setting the stage for potential Turkish military intervention in the regional conflict. He interprets this as a warning to Israel and to the United States that they are playing with fire and risking a full-scale war. He hopes this message is received. He believes that the presence of offshore naval power might inaccurately be seen as a deterrent to Turkey, Iran, and other regional actors from engaging in conflict with Israel. He argues that naval power alone will not be enough of a deterrent as there are limitations to what can be achieved at sea. He notes the air power assets available estimating that only a fraction can be actively deployed at any given time. He acknowledges the potential threat posed by S-400 systems in Syria and northern Lebanon, which could result in the loss of aircraft and escalate into a larger regional conflict. Highlighting Turkey's significant military capabilities within NATO, he emphasizes the potential for a coalition involving Turkey, Iran, and other regional players to pose a substantial threat to Israel's existence. He expresses deep concern about the current trajectory, stating that intervention is necessary to prevent what he sees as Israel's self-destructive path under Mr. Netanyahu's leadership, which he perceives as leading toward Armageddon. The issue revolves around Israel's understandable interest in dismantling Hamas, a sentiment shared by many, including myself. Recently, there has been a shift where Hamas is depicted as holy warriors defending their territory, aligning them directly against Israel. It's critical for a president with authority to intervene and prevent Israel from executing its current plans regarding Gaza, akin to Richard Nixon's stance on the Israeli presence near the Suez Canal. This raises concerns about jeopardizing existing agreements such as the one between Egypt and Israel. Our concern here is significant. Why would anyone want to jeopardize the current situation? Egypt has invested considerable effort in fostering collaboration with Israel. There's evidence that Egyptian military intelligence warned Israel about the potential Hamas attack this dynamic presents a challenge, particularly considering the widespread anger across the Muslim world, notably in Egypt. It's a test for leaders like General Sisi to manage the impulse to defend Gaza's inhabitants while avoiding conflict with Israel. Jordan faces similar dilemma. Despite efforts to maintain positive ties with Israel, the consistent message is that collective punishment undermines Israeli security rather than enhancing it. Hence, a decisive president is needed to convey a clear message. Withdrawal of support if Israel persists in its actions or reconsideration if it pulls back. This task is formidable, given Israel's influence in Washington, D.C. is very evident when observing figures like Lindsey Graham, among many others, and recalling the views of individuals like Norman Poritz, who advised John McCain that there has been a persistent desire for the annihilation of Iran. Among certain circles, there's fixation on attacking Iran appears to be gaining momentum, with figures like former Senator Joseph Lieberman advocating for similar actions. The notion of targeted missile strikes as a limited engagement is seen as impractical as war tends to escalate without restraint. This inclination to attack Iran is not new. It's been expressed repeatedly over the years. The belief now seems to be that the current administration is more amenable to such actions, with individuals within the Biden cabinet showing a strong inclination towards aggression against Iran. However, this focus on Iran overlooks the broader dynamics in the region. A potential attack on Iran could coincide with significant Turkish troop movements through Syria, posing challenges for Israel especially considering the risks to naval and air forces in the eastern Mediterranean. Strategic positioning of forces such as carrier battle groups is influenced by the threat landscape, leading to considerations like the vulnerability of assets in the eastern Mediterranean. Escalation of conflict could involve multiple actors, including Syria, Turkey, Iran, 
and even Russia. While Russia has shown accommodation towards Israeli interests, recent events in Ukraine may compel Moscow to support Iran to prevent its destruction, akin to the complexities that led to the outbreak of World War I, where initial neutrality transformed into active involvement over time. The decision to enter the war within a short time frame was made without delving into the underlying reasons. There was a misconception that the sheer might of their fleet in the North Atlantic, comprising the most powerful battleships globally, would secure victory. However, little consideration was given to the fact that this naval power wouldn't impede the advance of a million German troops into France. American soldiers already stationed in regions like Syria and Iraq, along with numerous American bases in Turkey, further complicate the situation. That presence of nuclear weapons stored in Turkey adds another layer of concern, particularly given the unpredictable nature of Turkish leadership under Mr. Erdogan contemplating the fate of American bases in such a scenario raises questions about potential hostage situations and Turkish control over these facilities, presenting a more significant problem than the current hostage crisis in Gaza. Overall, there are no apparent benefits for the United States in this scenario. Instead, it risks being dragged into a situation for which it may not be adequately prepared. While there are reports of special operations forces being deployed, the exact numbers remain uncertain. Incidents involving American and Israeli special operations soldiers in Gaza, including casualties, have occurred, although such operations are typically shrouded in secrecy. Despite the involvement of special operations forces, details are often kept confidential, regardless of whether the outcomes are positive or negative. Certainly the president is aware of the situation and has authorized these actions. Special Operations Command undoubtedly views this as a unique opportunity, one they're likely enthusiastic about. However, I don't necessarily share that perspective, but it's probably the prevailing attitude within Special Operations Command. The delay in deployment might stem from the need to bolster capabilities in the region. We're deploying Patriot missiles and theater high-altitude air defense systems to address the Iranian missile threat, which requires strategic position. With the addition of another carrier battle group forming a task force, the stage seems set for troop deployment into Gaza. Addressing the question of innocent civilians entering such a complex and ravaged environment poses significant challenges. The urban landscape resembles the destruction of Dresden in 1945, making it difficult to distinguish combatants from non-combatants. In such circumstances, the inclination of soldiers, whether Israeli, American, British, or any other, is to neutralize perceived threats swiftly to ensure survival. Additionally, the heightened tensions in the Muslim world suggest that the situation remains volatile, with potential threats emerging from various quarters. He believes that the United States is on the verge of confronting harsh realities stemming from open borders and unregulated immigration. He highlights the example of the 911 attackers who initially entered the country legally but overstayed their visas, subsequently becoming illegal residents without effective tracking mechanisms in place. He expresses concerns about Hezbollah and Hamas having significant footholds in Mexico, potentially extending their influence within the United States. While acknowledging historical efforts by Israelis to minimize civilian casualties, he warns about potential threats posed by extremist elements within the American population emphasizing the need for vigilance and preparedness in addressing such risks. He doesn't perceive any current interest in Washington to de-escalate tensions. If anything, he observes a push in the opposite direction, with few voices advocating for caution amidst heightened emotions. There's a lack of consideration for the strategic and operational implications, including potential threats highlighted by Turkish President Erdogan and intelligence reports of impending attacks. He anticipates growing anger among American and European populations as they become entangled in conflicts involving terrorist organizations, largely due to their support for Israel. However, he stresses the importance of weighing the consequences carefully while maintaining support for Israel. Despite this, he laments the failure to prioritize.